Black celebrity, the black athlete, the black entertainer is a corporate commodity. They are plantation slaves. I don't say this to be disrespectful. I say it to be honest. The only difference between your black celebrities and our ancestors who picked cotton in Mississippi 157 years ago is they get a check. Our ancestors did not. They are just as controlled and I would argue more enslaved than our ancestors were. Because when you look at their contracts, they have contracts, specifically the athletes, that specifically specifically forbids them from getting involved in any black community grassroots work. Yeah. This is why when you see the football players and the NBA players, they always taking pictures with white kids. Why they never taking pictures with black kids? Because they afraid of looking too black because looking too black does not allow me to be marketable. And if I'm not marketable, my career ends. Let's go back to the billionaires, the multi, mega multi-millionaire mm -hmm. African-American mm -hmm. that are in this country. How, <laughs> with the power and the money that they have, why do you think they don't have a voice at this point? Because, yeah, because money don't equal really power. Is. Money don't equal power. And if the white man knows. Like, like, it's like, God damn. And when I, your identity. I got $3 billion. Yeah, but your identity is tied up in your money. Your ego is tied up in your money. Mm. That means you're not willing to lose your money for anything. Right. Do you understand but that? You got your money, though. You got it. It can be taken. Mm. Because they all got it from white folks. Got they got that money from white folks. Mm. None of them are self-made. Mm. LeBron James is a phenomenal basketball player. Yeah. Shout out to him for breaking the record. Yeah. But LeBron James got rich through the NBA. That's a white corporation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oprah Winfrey got rich but, through but, the white but, corporation. But, 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 there are no buts. That's how it works. That was not how it works. Okay, so you're telling It doesn't have to okay, work that okay, way. Okay, okay. And this is not a I own this station. Okay? Mm -hmm. So this is grassroots for me. I have all of these employees because I know old school radio, but if, 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 if corporate America gives me dollars and I still use this platform, we got you on this platform, okay. and you're saying what you're saying, how do, how do I combat that? You see what I'm saying? Here's the thing. Okay. If it's not all black, eventually it will be set back. You understand? So, although you may own the station, if you become overly dependent on white corporate sponsorship, Technically, you're not black anymore. Well, we, we don't, but... Right. We, we don't. But you understand what I'm saying. There's black, black stations who are like that. Right. That are on this station, and that's how it survived for the last 11 years. Got you. So yeah. you're black. But what I'm saying is, you have stations around the country mm -hmm. who started off black, mm -hmm. fell in love with that white dollar, mm -hmm. and they're no longer black anymore. Mm -hmm. You see? Mm -hmm. So the, the balancing act that you have to engage in and other black businesses of any kind has to engage in is how far... Do I go in accepting this white corporate sponsorship, support, or advertising before they start pulling back? Take me, I'm on the Breakfast Club, right? Yeah. Why do you think I'm only on the Breakfast Club once a year? Mm. Because the white corporate sponsors of the Breakfast Club are not interested in hearing Dr. Umar Johnson all the time, even though I get more views than your favorite rapper. Right. You understand yeah. me? Okay, but, but power is about power. No white man is going to fund you. You got a Charlemagne that does whatever the hell he does. Yeah, but Charlemagne ain't Dr. Umar Johnson. You understand me? Yeah, he's on the contract. Okay. No, no, Charlemagne is my brother, but he's not me. There's no other me. You understand? There's other brothers who get in there, but they ain't there yet. Right. Very few people have my education who are willing to flip on the system and expose it the way that it is, who didn't leave the system because they were angry at the white man for disinviting them. See, I'm organic. Right. I wasn't trying to run for office and got the chair pulled out. I didn't have a big job with the white man and got the chair pulled out. A lot of these conscious guys came to black consciousness mm -hmm. because the white man sabotaged them. If they never got sabotaged, they'll still be sitting next to their slave master. Mm -hmm. You understand me? Right. That ain't me. So their loyalty to the black community is conditional on income and finances. You see that? Wherever the money go, that's where their political ideology oh, goes. Money. You gotta be careful. I stay on the money because I always believe it, it goes with the Follow money. the money. Yeah. No black dollar, no black power. And I'm wondering, you know, with so many black millionaires and billionaires out here that could be assisting these mm -hmm. programs mm -hmm. and doing what needs to be done, why do you think that doesn't happen? Because like you said, Martin and Stokely and all them, they didn't have the resources in their work. That's their why they were effective. Billionaires and millionaires back then to contribute. That's why they were effective, Queen. See, back then, the black community funded the grassroots organizations. Mm -hmm. You follow me? Right. 
if Stokely and King, and I don't think they would have went for it anyway because they was too sincere, which is another big difference between them and us. Most of these yeah. guys are looking for money, not freedom, right? Yeah. But they were so sincere, they would have never ex accepted a dollar from the power structure anyway. Mm -hmm. After Stokely and King and Malcolm, that's when the government said, we need to start funding black community organizations mm -hmm. to do what? Prevent right. black re revolution right. and radicalism. Right. Yeah. That's why your black churches don't do much right. because most of them are tapping into city grants, state grants, federal grants. And of course, corporate wow, American grants. But more specifically to your question, we have to stop talking about the celebrities helping us. They're never gonna do it. Mm -hmm. And if they are gonna do it, they're gonna do it only after you have shown and proven you are serious mm -hmm. and you have achieved a victory. For example, take FDMG, right? I'm the, I'm the biggest black scholar in the world. There's no name that comes next to mine. I haven't got a single donation from a black celebrity. Wow. I know many of them. They talk my phone, they text me, I know them all. Your Grammy Award winners, all that. I know them all. They call me. Never wrote a check. Never wrote a check. Not one of them wrote a check. Do I fault them, though? Because here's what I'm going to say. When we open up that school next year, right, and they see them kids in there, I want to see if I get it checked in. Some of them want to help, but they're afraid. They got to make sure before they stick their neck out, mm -hmm. Dr. Umar is serious because after all, we heard he stole the money. He did this. Ain't no yeah. school, right? Yeah. So once they see the students, I may get a check. Most of them will never donate because the black celebrity, the black athlete, the black entertainer is a corporate commodity. They are plantation slaves. I don't say this to be disrespectful. I say it to be honest. The only difference between your black celebrities and our ancestors who picked cotton in Mississippi 157 years ago is they get a check. Our ancestors did not. They are just as controlled and I would argue more enslaved than our ancestors were. Because when you look at their contracts, they have contracts. Yeah. specifically the athletes mm -hmm. that specifically forbids them from getting involved in any black community grassroots work yeah. this is why when you see the football players and the NBA players they always taking pictures with white kids why they never taking pictures with black kids because they afraid of looking too black yeah. because looking too black does not allow me to be marketable and if I'm not marketable my career ends and if they do this in a poor community instead of you know Thanks, like they go to these other white schools and all this that are privileged but if you see them go to a black school this is an underserved community and they really didn't they really just do it for the photo op yeah they don't they don't drop no money off yeah they show and my thing is the fact that you can get a tax write off you should be dropping even more money right, right. you see because i'm trying to understand how you got 20 cars in your garage but the neighborhood you come from ain't even got a decent school for the kids right you got your own jet or two and three jets but the neighborhood you live in is plagued with crime because there's no jobs for black people and to that point one of the justifications that the Mississippi State Legislature made for the expansion of the uh, Capital District Zone right. is crime, right? Backlogging crime. They got to process some of these cases. Well, if you really care about the crime in Jackson or the crime in Mississippi, how about you target the causes mm -hmm. of that crime? And the two biggest causes of crime in America are miseducation and economic castration. Mm -hmm. So if they are sincere about caring about the crime, what have they done for schools in Jackson mm -hmm. over the past 10, 20, 30 years? Mm -hmm. Don't tell me you care about crime and you're not making the schools better. For example, Example, do we have industrial building trade programs in Jackson, Mississippi? No. I don't just mean one or two classes. I mean an entire program that takes you from A to Z. And once you finish high school, you can sit for your Mississippi state license to be a plumber, electrician, <laughs> auto body mechanic. You understand right. me? Right. That's what we used to have yeah. in the black community. The skills that pay the bills. The reason why these brothers out here stealing and robbing and looting, because they got kids to feed, mouths to feed, and nobody's giving them no economic opportunity. So can't nobody talk to me about crime until you talk to me about jobs. Well, wait, 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 wait. What, what do you say to the, the, the younger the younger black people who are committing crimes? Because now the, the, the crime wave is with the 12 through about 17, 18. Well, they're being old. nurtured by the olders to do the crime. Yeah. You understand me? So they're being socialized by their big homies right. to do the crime. They're not waking up or walking outside with the guns. They're being paid to do the drive-bys, sell the dope, pass the packages and everything else. But I want to be clear. As bad as crime is, and it is, I will not demonize the brothers who are doing it, yeah. because I understand that they exist within a social structure created by white people to suffocate black people to death. You understand? Right. And unfortunately, our black politicians, state, uh, local, national, they are not fighting enough for economic opportunity for black males. When is the last time you heard a conversation on the Mississippi state floor, congressional state floor down in D.C.? Any state, any city talking about a bill to create jobs for black men in the inner city. Have you ever heard that conversation? No, just, All you hear about is prisons and police. And the research shows you that more police and more prisons does not reduce crime. This, it has no effect. So why are you putting more cops on the street? Because you're giving white people jobs and careers in the name of black dysfunctionality. 